got another exam question here on the NMR topic. So we're up to number 13 now. There's the question there. So if you want to have a go at that, pause the video and then play on when you're ready for the answers. Okay, so we'll make a start. So we've got the molecular formula of compound H. We're told the carbon-13 NMR spectrum contained eight separate peaks. So that's obviously the number of different carbon environments in the molecule. I'm going to come back to that at the very end once I've got a good idea of what the structure is. The main focus is obviously the proton NMR spectrum. And uh, I'll do what I do normally, go through each signal in turn and talk about the shift value, the splitting and the peak area. And obviously, if we can, we'll draw that little part of the structure up and then just build up the molecule as it goes. Uh, you'll notice I've done this with this signal here and we're told just on the bottom there, uh, the peak at delta 3.7 ppm, so this one here, would normally be expected around 1 ppm uh, to the right. Obviously, you can see why they've done that because they would have they just crashed into each other. So they've had to do that there. So like I said, we'll take each peak in turn. I'll talk through the splitting pattern, the peak area and the shift. And then obviously I'll write it all up uh, like I normally do underneath. So we'll start furthest to the left. So this peak here at delta, what's that, 9.7 ppm, it's a triplet. So that means there's an adjacent CH2 group to the proton or protons, well, proton actually, causing this signal. The area is one, so there's only one proton in this signal, so one hydrogen causes this peak. And the shift value is um, an H to C to double bond O. And on the data sheet there, that's clearly signposted as an aldehyde proton. So there it all is written up there. So essentially, we have got C double bond O with that single hydrogen. And that's what's caused that signal. And next to it is a CH2 group, and that's what's caused the triplet. So moving on to this signal now, the one around about 7 ppm. So I'm going to start with the area this time. So it's got an area of four. So there's four hydrogens in this environment. The shift is um, indicative of aromatic protons. We know it's aromatic because of the shift value and the fact that it's a multiplet. And the great thing is we don't need to analyze uh, splitting patterns of aromatic protons. So we've got a benzene ring with four hydrogens on. So therefore, there must be two substituent groups on the benzene ring. So there's all that information written up there. So we'll move on to the next signal, which is the one that's in the wrong place. So this one here. So what can we say about this? Well, it's a doublet. So there's an adjacent single hydrogen, an adjacent CH. It's got an area of two. So there's two hydrogens in this environment that's causing this signal. So it's a CH2 group effectively. And the shift, well, there's two possible options. It could be an H to C to C double bond O proton, or it could be an H to C to benzene ring. Now, if I move on to the bit we already know so far, we've already got a hydrogen sort of with an adjacent CH2 group. So remember the first, this signal here, this triplet was due to this proton. So the, the one that's been put in the wrong place must be due to these protons here. So there's all that information written up and we're saying that this is the structural feature from that information. So it's basically just the, the reverse argument of what we saw here with this signal. So we're talking about these now. Okay, so we'll move on to this signal now. So this is at around about 2.7 ppm. So it's a quartet. So there's an adjacent CH3 group. The area of two is telling us that a CH2 group is causing the peak. And the shift value is indicative of a hydrogen bonded to a carbon bonded to a benzene ring. It could also be the H to C to C double bond O, but we've already got protons in that environment. So we're going to go for the other option. So there's that little bit written up. So what we can draw now is we must have a benzene ring with a CH2 attached, and adjacent to that is a CH3 group. 
And then while I've got this structure um, on the screen, we can talk about the other peak, and I'll go back up the spectrum in a second. So we've just talked about those protons there. So if you think about these protons, because these haven't featured at all yet, these would have an area of three. They would be split into a triplet because they're adjacent to a CH2 group, and they're just in the H to C to R environment. So if we look at the spectrum, indeed we do have a triplet in the H to C to R environment, and it has got the area of three. Okay, so there's that little bit written up. I'm not gonna draw the structure out again because basically we've already got it here. So that signal at 1.3 ppm is due to these protons here. Okay, so we've just gotta put it all together now. So we know that we've got this benzene ring with an ethyl group attached, and we've also got this CH2, CHO group Remember we said there's two substituents off the benzene ring because we only had four aromatic hydrogens on that multiplet at around about 7 ppm. So basically all we need to do now is use the carbon-13 NMR to determine where to put uh, this aldehyde group in relation to this one. So here are our options. So we could have the 1,2 disubstituted benzene ring could have the 1,3, so 1,3 or we could have the one four. So all we need to do is look at how many carbon environments each of these has got, and obviously the one that has eight is gonna be the answer. So we'll look at this one first. So we've got one, two, three, four carbon environments, and then because there's no symmetry around this benzene ring, all six of those carbons on the benzene ring are all different. So this one has got 10 environments, so it's not that one. Likewise for this one, so you've got one, two, three, four, all the benzene carbons are different. So this has also got 10 carbon environments, so it's not this one either. So it's got to be this one, but let's just show it. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So these are equivalent, and so are these. So eight environments in this one, so this is the answer.